Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people. Teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. on the flyer, right? Yeah. What would you tell God on judgment day if he said, why should I let you into the into heaven? Why should I let you into the kingdom? What would your response be? To be honest be? with you, I'd be like, Lord, I don't know. What about you? Uh, I got a machine called poststopcop.com and it's up in Sarafield, Oakland, and I've been pushing this thing since the first day of the Barack Obama administration. So I've been putting in a lot of work. Hopefully he would say, Billy, you're okay, you may enter. That's okay. what I'm going to what did Christ say about that? Get Matthew 19. You're already there. You're in the spirit. Let's see what God said that you have to do, or Christ said you have to do, to be able to answer that question. Read that. Matthew chapter 19, verse 16. Read Go! It. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? So that's the very same question that's on that fly, right? This man asked Christ, what do I need to do so that I can have eternal life? So that on judgment day, I can tell you, Lord, I did this. Right? Read on. And he said unto him, why callest thou me good? So this is Christ's response. He said, why are you calling me good? Read. There is none good but one. Uh-huh. That is God. So he gave all praises to his father. He said, the only one that's good is the most high God. You look confused. I'm going I'm to go back on that in a second after I finish this. Mm -hmm. Read on. But if thou wilt enter into life. He said, but if you want the kingdom of heaven, if you want eternal life. Keep the commandments. Do what? Keep the commandments. It's a very simple answer that he gave. He said, keep the commandments. That's it. That's all you have to do is keep the commandments. Very simple answer. It doesn't take a lot of scriptures to explain. It doesn't take a whole lot of understanding. You don't have to be a genius to understand what Christ said. Christ said, do what? What did Christ say, brother? Read that again. He said, keep the commandments, right? So now, do you know the commandments? Yeah, somewhat. You know, that's when I feel, that's when I feel. Read, read that again. Read that last part again. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. It says keep the commandments. Not some, not a few of them. It says keep the commandments. Meaning, any commandment you can find in this Bible, that you should be keeping. But remember, Christ wasn't speaking to black people. He wasn't speaking to Hispanic people. He wasn't speaking to white people. He was talking to who? He was talking to the children of Israel. That's right. That's, right. That's who he told to keep the commandments. African Americans can't keep the commandments. Right. West Indians can't keep the commandments. Right. Haitians can't keep them. Right. Puerto Ricans can't keep them. Right. The, the names that you've been called today, that you've been given, those Gentile names, they can't keep the commandments. Israel. You can only keep the commandments as an Israelite. That's right. Because that's who the commandments were given to. Right. They were given to Israelites. So if you don't first remember that you are an Israelite, you're not going to keep any commandments that's written in the Bible. Right. So do you understand that you are an Israelite? 
I'm starting to get down. Okay, do you want me to prove it to you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me Deuteronomy 28. I start at verse 15. I'm going to prove to you that you're an Israelite. I'm going to prove to you all that you are the children of Israel. Bring it right. right. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. Bring it up. But it shall come to pass. So this is Moses speaking to the children of Israel, right? He said, it shall come to pass. Meaning at some point in the future, this is going to happen. If thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. He said, if you don't listen to God, if you don't do what God told you to do, read. To observe, to do all his commandments. It says to observe, meaning to learn, to understand, and to do. That has always been our problem. A lot of our people know the commandments, but they refuse to do them. We have to do the commandments, read. And his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. He said curses will come upon the children of Israel and overtake them. Okay? Now, what I want to ask you is, our claim is that the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are the children of Israel, right? God said that curses or bad things would happen to these same children of Israel if they didn't keep the commandments. Now I want you to tell me some things that happened to only so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. What are some things that happen to us that seem like a cursed thing that don't happen to other nations? You said slavery. Right. Let's, let's start on that. Slavery. Okay, well, let's go, through, let's go through the list and then we'll go back and touch them. You said slavery, yeah. rape. Yeah. What else? Man. Theft. Um, what are some things that happen to so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans that don't happen to other nations? The brother said slavery, rape, theft. What else? Uh, you said the coronavirus. Lied on, we get lied on, slandered, right? Defamed as a nation of people. Okay, let's go through that list like and see if the Bible lines up with that. Yes, sir, what you got? I, I said I like it. Okay. The first thing you said was slavery, right? Give me verse 32. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 32. Bring it out. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Stop. It says your sons and your daughters would be taken from you and given to another nation of people. Read on. And thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. So you would desire to have your kids back. You would long for your children back. Read. And there shall be no might in thine hand. But you'd have no power to get those children that were taken from you back. Bring it out. That sounds a lot like slavery, right? Yeah. When you have your children stripped from you and given to another nation of people and you have no power to do anything about it. Okay, read 48. Verse 48. No, I'm sorry, 68. Verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Now, the Bible says the Lord will bring us into Egypt again. The word Egypt is Greek. It means bondage or slavery. Get Exodus 20 real quick. Exodus chapter 20, verse 2. Bring it out. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of Bondage. When we were taken out of Egypt, we were taken from the house of bondage because that was our condition when we were in Egypt, right? We were slaves. So the Bible says that Egypt is the house of bondage. Go back to Deuteronomy 28 now. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. So we would go into slavery again or bondage again, but how? With ships. With what?
talking about. Y'all all in the group. Why this shit going on right now? Why y'all can't? We all black, bro. We all black, man. We all black. You see, look at up. We all black, bro. We all black. Where my bag at? Hey. He just spanked that baby. It's that Crips right there. He just spanked that baby. He just spanked that baby. Wipe that baby nose. We wipe his nose. He's free. Oh yeah, I just seen nigga get knocked out. He ain't getting these back. I got shots. I just took all these shots. I just took, bro. I'm up. I'm up. A hundred thousand. I'm up. Fuck you talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Because the black men, we hate each other. God said we should not deal like that. Right. Read it again. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. God says we are not supposed to hate each other in our heart. Right. We're not supposed to deal like that with one another. Right. We have the white man dealing with us that way. The white man hates us. The other nations hate us. Right. Why do we have to hate each other? Read it again. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Read on. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. So we're supposed to correct that foolishness. We're supposed to correct that. Because that's a major problem in our community. All right. Read on and not suffer sin upon him. We are not allowed to allow our brothers to remain in sin. Give me Deuteronomy 28.65. You, know, you know what's so sad? Is that we suffer these curses of God at the hands of the oppressors. We should not have to go through it from our own people. Read Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 65. And among these nations, Shout, they'll find no ease. It says amongst the nations where we were scattered, we will find no ease, man. We would have no peace, man. The sad thing is, is that we don't find peace or ease amongst our own. That's sad, bro. We can't even go amongst our own people and have peace of mind. Right. Read. Neither shall the soul of thy foot have rest. Come on. But the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart. Amongst our own people, we have a trembling heart. Amongst our own people, we don't feel safe. That's a problem in our communities, man. Read on. And failing of eyes and sorrow of mind. That's a heavy thing, man. That weighs heavy on brothers. Right. To see your brothers dealt with like that. Right. Read on. And thy life shall hang in doubt. You have no surety of your own life amongst your own people. God said we should not deal like that, man. We're supposed to feel safe amongst our people. Right. We're supposed to protect one another. I'm supposed to have your back. You're supposed to have my back against all odds because we have enough against us. We have enough that we have to face. Why do we have to pull each other down? You know? Why do we have to deal with each other like that? Right. That's sad, man. When are we going to stand up as men? That's something that kids do, man. Fist fighting and arguing and stuff, that's childish, man. Right. When are we going to put that stuff away? We are too old for that. Give me 1 Kings 2 and 2. When are we going to stand up and be men? And deal as men? Read that. First Kings, chapter 2, verse 2. Bring it out. I go the way of all the earth. Be thou strong, therefore, and show thyself a man. King Solomon is talking to his father here. His father said to him, show yourself a man. Let's see what he told him to do. Read on. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God. And do what? And keep the charge of the Lord thy God. He said keep the charge of the Lord thy God. Meaning keep what God told you to do. Read on. 
to walk in his ways. So walk in the ways of God. To keep his statutes. And to keep the statutes. Keep the commandments of God. Right. That's what a father, a dying father, told his son. As a father, as men, as leaders, these are the things we need to be telling our young men. To keep the commandments of God. Keep the charge of the Lord. We refuse to do that. We refuse to do that. Now I'm going to get back to the commandments. Because... How long have you known you're an Israelite? Let me ask you that. How long have you known you're Not an Israelite? Not long. Not long. I just learned. Not long. Okay. Give me uh, Psalms 147. No, I'm sorry. Give me Numbers 1538. Let's go ahead. And then we'll touch on Dan Batal. Numbers chapter 15, verse 38. Yeah. Speak unto the children of Israel. So this is Moses talking to the children of Israel. He says, speak to them. And bid them. And command them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. That they make fringes in the borders of their garments. These are fringes. God said that we're supposed to have those on the borders of our garments. Once again, it seems like a very small thing, right? Let's see the significance behind it. Throughout their generation, uh -huh. and that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. And on top of the fringe, we're supposed to put a ribbon of blue. Bring on. And it shall be unto you for a fringe, that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord. So these fringes have a very significant purpose. We're supposed to be able to look at these and remember that we are to keep the commandments of God. That's the purpose behind the fringes. Now, give me Exodus 20 and 8. Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. God said to remember the Sabbath day. This is one of the Ten Commandments. As a child of Israel, as, a, as one of God's chosen, the Bible says to remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Right? Now, today is the Sabbath day, but today is not just any other Sabbath day. Today is a very special Sabbath day. You, let me ask you this, brother. Do you know what today is? It's the Sabbath day. What's significant about this Sabbath day above all of us? Do you know? Give me uh, Leviticus 16 and 29. Here we go! Leviticus chapter 16, verse 29. Today is actually the Day of Atonement. The Day of Atonement is a day that the Most High God gave us to be forgiven of all our sins. Yes, right. To come before Him and to make an atonement for the sins that we've committed. Right. Read that. Leviticus chapter 16, wow. verse 29. And this shall be a statute forever. So this is a commandment of God, a law of God forever. Read. Unto you that in the seventh month. So in the seventh month, okay, the seventh month. Now, you might be thinking, wait, it's not month seven, but that's according to Esau's calendar, according to the white man's calendar. Right. We don't go by that calendar. Right. We go by the biblical calendar. Right. Okay? The new year actually starts. Seventh month on the tenth day of the month. So it says in the seventh month on the tenth day of the month. Like I was saying before. According to the white man's calendar, this is not the seventh month. Right. But when you go by the biblical calendar, which goes according to the new moon, this is the seventh month. And it's right. the tenth day of that same month. Right. Read. You shall afflict your soul. It says you shall afflict your soul. Uh, hold that, get Isaiah 58 and 3. So it says to afflict your soul. We have to go over what it means to afflict your soul. Isaiah. Chapter 58 and verse 3. Do it up. I think it's verse 3. This is verse 3, right? Isaiah chapter 58 and verse 3. Wherefore have we fasted? It Say says, hey. wherefore have we fasted? You know what a fast is? A fast means to abstain from, right? And thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul? It says, wherefore have we afflicted our soul? So to fast is to afflict your soul. The purpose of fasting is to deny your flesh so that your spirit can be built up. That's the purpose of fasting. Now, in the Christian church, they teach you that fasting, you can do a fast of just water, or you can do a fast of just fruit, or whatever the case may be. A biblical fast 
get home. Read that. Read that whole scripture, and then we'll get Jonah three. Wherefore have we fasted? Say they, and thou seest not. Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast, ye find pleasure and exact all your labor. So now, to fast means to afflict your soul, right? You can drop that, go to Jonah chapter three. So we have really? to understand what a biblical fast is. Because the purpose, like I said, is to abstain from, to withhold the things necessary of your flesh so that you can strengthen your spirit, right? So now I'm gonna to explain to you what a biblical fast is because that's the first part of keeping the day of atonement. Jonah chapter, chapter three and verse verse five. You know, so the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast. So now the people of Nineveh, the children of Israel, proclaimed a fast, meaning they decided that they were going to do a fast. Three and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them even to the least of them. So we had to put on sackcloth. That was, an, that was an old custom that we would outwardly show that we were fasting. We don't have to outwardly show that we're fasting anymore, read. For word came unto the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, and he laid his robe from him, and covered him with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. So he put the sackcloth on, and he sat in ashes, read. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles. So now he put out a decree, meaning this is the fast that we're going to do. Read. Saying, let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Do what? Taste anything. So man, flock, cow, whoever was amongst you was not supposed to taste anything, meaning nothing was supposed to hit your tongue. Read. Let them not feed nor drink water. So you're not supposed to eat or supposed to drink. Now, what's the significance behind that? What do you think the significance is? I already explained it to you. I want to see, can you explain it back to me? Uh, the significance is you pay attention in the following commandments. That would be significant in that you are following his laws and guidelines. Okay. Speaking of specifically about the fast, read that again, that bottom part. Verse seven. Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink water. Now, what are the, the things that is necessary for your flesh to, to thrive, to live? Water and food. Water and food, right? So, your body would naturally crave those things. Your body would naturally feel like you need those things. A fast is from sundown to sundown. Do you think you could go 24 hours without eating or drinking? It's very possible, right? But your body would be hurting. Eventually, you would start to get them little hunger pains. But you have to prove to yourself that your body is strong enough to go without those things. The same thing with sin. It's symbolic. We're supposed to abstain from eating and drinking to show that we have the willpower to make it without those things. Spiritually, that's what you're doing. You're strengthening your spirit to show that you don't need the things of the world. Go back to Leviticus 16 now, 29. So to afflict your soul means to fast. Leviticus chapter 16 verse 29. And this shall be a statute forever unto you, that in the seventh month, on the tenth day of the month, you shall afflict your souls and do no work at all. So now you have to fast and you're not supposed to do any work. Just like every other Sabbath day, you're not supposed to do any work. God gave you six days in a week to get all your work done. Right. As black people, we already don't like going to work. Bring it up. We hate going to captivity. Right. So why is it that when God commanded you to take a day off, we don't want to do it? That's, that makes it. no sense. Oh, That's exactly why, because he said it, we want to do the opposite. Right. God said you got six days to go out there and work as hard as you can. Be all that you can be. But on my Sabbath day, you need to rest. Why? Because we need a day to get away from captivity. When Christ created everything, he took a day off. Are we, great? Are we better than him? No. Christ kept the Sabbath day. Why shouldn't we? Bro, read on. Whether it be one of your own country or a stranger that's so dark among you. So whether it be one of our own country, one of our people, 
or somebody that was living in our land. Things were supposed to be shut down. There wasn't supposed to be no stores open, nobody buying, nobody selling, no business running, nothing. Read. For on that day shall the priest make an atonement for you. So it says on that day, the Levitical priest, the high priest in particular, was supposed to make an atonement for us. Meaning he was supposed to take a sin offering and offer it for himself, for his household, and for the entire nation of Israel. Now my question to you is, do the Levitical priests still have to make that offering for us? Give me 1 Peter 2 and 3. You said you think they should. Okay, let's see what God said. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 3. On the day of atonement, the Levitical priest had a very, the high priest, which was Aaron during the time of Leviticus. He had a very heavy job. Let's see if God keeps that on them or if he put it on us now. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 3. Are you know, if so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. So on the day of atonement, we get a taste of the Lord's grace. Why? Because he forgives us for every sin that we've committed against him. That's right. right. So we taste the Lord's grace on this day. Right. Read. To whom coming as unto a living stone. So we come to Christ as unto a living stone because him forgiving us of our sins, it gives us life. That's Read. Right. Disallowed indeed of men. Christ was hated by everybody for that. God was hated because he chose the nation of Israel. Right. The other nations, they hate God for that. Right. Read. But chosen of God and precious. But God chose Christ. God chose us to be precious. That's right. Christ was chosen to fulfill that office of the Levitical priest. Read right. on. He also as lively stones. So now because Christ was chosen, we are chosen. We're made lively stones. Just like us, we go to Christ to get life, our people can now come to us to be taught how to get life. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed but at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.